views and results. As part of us, I'm a Let's get into it. It's another round, second round on a Sunday, just a week away from the big double or nothing pay per view event from Las Vegas. And we are here for a very special top 10 takes to talk about the best matches, top 10 matches, as a matter of fact, in double or nothing history. So let's get into it in a moment. Just a quick reminder of what's coming up ahead later today and to tonight, actually. Two more ramps. We are going to be doing a special laying the ramp down where we're going to be looking back on all the crazy industry news from the past week. We're going to be talking about everything with Collision, uh, the Warner Brother upfronts, what didn't get announced, also the CM Punk controversy, and so much more as part of laying the ramp down. And as well, we are going to be closing out tonight with yet another top 10 takes. And that one will be the top 10 all-time greatest matches in AEW history to lead into what will be the fourth anniversary of AEW Wrestling coming up this week in Las Vegas with Dynamite from the, the original location of the first AEW show that was Double or Nothing 2019. Dynamite will be there on Wednesday. I will be there with dropping all kinds of content from that show. And, of course, we got Double or Nothing on Sunday from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So let's not waste any more time here. Let's get into the top ten matches of all time in Double or Nothing history. Before we get into the top ten of the top ten takes matches, let's talk about matches that did not make the list from Double or Nothing pay-per-views that deserve honorable mention. A couple of them here. Uh, actually, more than a couple of them. How about the Casino Battle Royals from both 2021 and 2019? In fact, the 2019 one was technically the first match in AEW history. This was the Casino Battle Royal that Hangman Adam Page won to take on Chris Jericho at All Out. Uh, 2021 was, I believe, won by Jungle Boy, if I recall. And let's talk about also the Casino Ladder Match from 2020 that Brian Cage debuted at and won in a pretty wild one. That just barely missed the list. Also, a few other women's matches that just missed the list. Serena Deeb, Thunder Rosa from 2022. I thought this was a really uh, technically sound match. The crowd really wasn't into it. I was there live. And it was kind of in a bad spot on the pay-per-view, I would call it, more than anything. Also, uh, Britt Baker and Hikaru Shida from 2021. This is where Baker beat Shida, who actually had a really lengthy title reign of about a year, if I recall, for Hikaru Shida. Just barely missed the list. Another one that just barely missed the list was uh, Brody Lee and John Moxley from 2020. That match was hurt by no crowd, for sure. Uh, as you remember, Double or Nothing was just like literally a, a month or two after the coronavirus pandemic hit, and there was nobody in that crowd other than, I guess, paid talent on the AEW side for that one. So those are the honorable mention matches. Let's get into the top 10 matches of Double or Nothing history. This is my opinion only. You guys may disagree completely with these, these picks, but hey, I'm just throwing them out there. All right, number 10. This might be a little bit higher on somebody other other lists, but I went number 10 on my list with this. CM Punk against Adam Page from last year's Double or Nothing. Now, looking back, I would like to probably watch this match again at some point because now we know all of this crazy dramatic history between these two guys and maybe why this match didn't click as well as it should have because there was this underlying tension between these two guys. Also in this match, there was significant botches. That also hurt it, but it was what it was. It was a, a nice way to end Double or Nothing 2022 with Punk winning that title. 
It singled the changing of the guard. It didn't last long. As you know, Punk got injured literally, I think, the next show in Los Angeles later that week on Dynamite. But for what it was, it at least made the list at number 10, but it could have been and should have been so much better. How about number nine? This was also from 2022's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. The House of Black over the Death Triangle, just uh, start to finish. The pace on this match was excellent. Just really good spots. Everybody shined in this match. This was excellent, excellent. And like I said, at number nine, I felt it was just a little bit better than the main event of Double or Nothing Tour 2022 of Punk and Page. Number eight, this was the only women's match I have on the list. This is Hikaru Shida and Nyla Rose in a no disqualification, anything goes match from Double or Nothing 2020. So there you go. Uh, this was the match to me that was the best women's match of all the Double or Nothing shows. That six women match from the first Double or Nothing 2 with a lot of the Japanese women and stuff was also right up there. I should have put that as an honorable mention in the list as well. But uh, Sheena really uh, looked great here. The no disqualification component worked, I think, an extra amount. It really made this match stand out as a physical match for sure. A very dramatic match as well. And Sheena was chasing for that title for a while. Number seven. This was also from 2020's Double or Nothing. This was the first ever spring stampede match. I thought a lot of really creative spots here. They were fighting all over that big Jacksonville Stadium. I, I enjoyed it. I thought, especially where we were at with coronavirus, it was a very isolating time in that moment. And I just remember being thoroughly entertained by this match to where I could shut my brain off completely and just enjoy this wild affair of a match. Spring Stampede Match 2020 version, the first one. Number six, I am going to put the 2021 Spring Stampede Match just slightly ahead of the 2021 on the list at number six. This match had a, a little more creativity to it, I felt like, and a lot more crowd interaction. They actually finished the match outside uh of the behind the scenes, like basically, they came back into the ringside area, into the ring, and actually finished the match there. It felt like a really big, wild, and memorable finish to Double or Nothing 2021 in Jacksonville. So that's why I put it just slightly ahead of 2020's version. And on a side note, I would not mind to see this match come back even on an episode of Dynamite. I think it would be really fun for them to revisit Spring Stampede again for a third time. Maybe with the Elite and uh, BCC. Just throwing it out there for a future idea for AEW. Number five. This was the world title match on 2021's version. Penny Omega over Pat and Orange Cassidy. Again, a match I felt like that overachieved. On paper, I really wasn't enthralled in this one. The build wasn't really that good either, if I recall. But damn, did they deliver in front of that hot crowd in Jacksonville uh, for number five from 2021. Let's get into the last four. Uh, number four. Here's another match involving Kenny Omega. This one was Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho from Double or Nothing 2019. Um, a really strong main event that was unfortunately overshadowed by a couple other matches we're going to talk about in a moment from 2019. But a really, a really fun main event, a really uh, fitting main event, I think, compared and considering uh, what we saw from Jericho and Omega in New Japan. It was, it was a nice rematch that fit in that main event spot just right. We had the John Moxley appearance after the match as well to end the show. Just all around awesome. Uh, number three, Anarchy in the Arena from 2022. This was what I put as the best match of Double or Nothing 2022. Being there live, it was wild. There was just stuff going on everywhere. Somewhat hard to see from being at ringside because there was so many moving parts going on. I thought the 
the cloud was engaged. There was a level of intensity here that you don't see all the time. And uh, it was a step up, I felt, compared to like the Spring Stampede matches, for example. It really was many steps up on this one. So that's why I gave it the number three spot, Anarchy in Arena 2022. I just bet, by the way, that the 2023 version will probably eclipse the quality of 2022, just as a prediction of sorts. Number two, we roll back to the first AW pay-per-view, Double or Nothing 2019, for the last two picks. You can probably guess what they are. Number two is the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers for the AW World Tag Team Championships. Or was, actually, I don't even know if the tag titles were on the line in this match, but I think they were. I think, I, it's been so long. You tell me, guys. I don't know if, it, if this was a tag tell match or if this was just these two teams going at it head to head. But at the time, it was a dream match. It kicked off uh, multi-year-long feuds with these guys. We just saw them revisit this last year in the six-man trios tag title best of series we saw it in the ladder match in all of 2019 which is probably arguably better than this match but on a list of the best matches of double or nothing history this takes number two the first meeting with the young bucks and the lucha brothers in aew and that leaves number one you can guess what it is the Battle of the Rhodes brothers, Dustin Rhodes against Cody Rhodes from Double or Nothing 2019. Uh, let me just tell you, being there live for this one was epic. I mean, it was, there was so much emotion in the crowd for this match. There was so much emotion in the ring, the blood component in this match. There were just so many aspects that hit and hit well. For Dustin Rhodes and Cody Rhodes, the match anticipated for ever in a day. It was teased in WWE forever. It was even tentatively slated for a WrestleMania, and Vince McMahon pulled it. And we finally got this match, and it delivered tenfold to make the number one of uh, the best match in Double or Nothing history. Dustin Rhodes and Cody Rhodes. There you go. Top ten takes, best matches. Double or nothing history. If you got some different thoughts on what you think should have been the number one best match, or maybe throw out your own list in the comments right here on YouTube. I'd love to see it. Love to get some discussion going on this one. What do you feel were the best matches in double or nothing history? Did I miss anything in the top ten? Throw down your thoughts in the comments, and we'll talk about it right here on YouTube. So. With that said, come on back later on. We got another double shot of more rants to come as we lead into Las Vegas for the next Wrestling Rants Road Trip. Coming up Wednesday onward, Double or Nothing Week is here, and see you right back here. Later on, for some more wrestling. Rants, baby!